Welcome back to my room where I sometimes build stuff and post it on the big internet. Now a few months back I started working on the lockdown challenge or use what you've got challenge where I'm aiming to build an entire ukulele base out of one piece of wood. Now when I started this it was cold outside and I could not go and work on my usual workbench. But now the weather got a little bit better and I did resume work on this project. I've already had some good progress with it but that will come in a separate video after this one so make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bells active so you can see whenever I post that video in the future. However, it is April and the weather is supposed to be amazing. Now a couple of days ago it actually snowed here again so I could not go outside and do any other woodworking but I could stay inside and work on a separate thing for this particular project. Now what I've had to do was to come up with a design for a bridge and the pickup for this instrument. Now because it is a ukulele base, this does not have metal strings, it has rubber strings. So I could not go with a traditional magnetic pickup, so I have to go with a piezo pickup. I have some piezo transducers left over from another project, so I'm going to use those. And obviously I'm going to 3D print everything, because why not? So without further ado, let's just go straight into this project. I'm going to do some 3D modeling, some 3D printing, and then I'm going to put everything together and test the pickup out. Let's go. Now what I usually use for 3D modeling is Fusion 360, which is an amazing software for more complicated projects. But lately I've been playing a lot with Shaper 3D for iPad. This is such a great software for quick and dirty prototype work. Now as with any 3D modeling software, I will start with a sketch of the bridge I'm trying to come up with. I'm starting the sketch with 4 circles, just a hair bigger in diameter than the piezo transducers which I'm going to use. I know that the distance between my strings will be about 16 mm, so I'm adding that to my sketch now and I'm also constraining the center between the two middle discs to the origin of the sketch to make sure it won't move anywhere. I'm now bringing in a picture of my base body, where I have roughly sketched a model of how I'd like my bridge to be. I'm scaling it up so that it matches my sketch, which has the right dimensions. I'm trying to make sure that the strings which are drawn onto the base body roughly match the circles that I have already sketched. Starting from here, I can roughly trace the contour of the bridge that I have on the base body. This software makes it fairly easy to work with splines and curves. Granted it is not as advanced as other CAD packages, this will be able to handle the majority of the cases thrown at it. Now after sketching the basic shape, I can start playing with it, moving the points and lines until everything starts looking good. I'm not extremely worried about dimensions at this particular time, but I want to have an aesthetically pleasing result. So I keep going at it, hiding and unhiding the picture until everything feels like it's in the right place. You might have also observed that I've decided to integrate a thumb rest in the design of the bridge, just because why not? After all, this is the essence of designing and printing your own parts, being able to integrate anything you'd like on your own instrument. Now after everything looks good in the bridge sketch, it is time to model a pocket for the wires to go into. So I'm just offsetting some of my edges and connecting them together. You'll understand everything a bit better when I start extruding and cutting the 3D part based on these sketches. So now that the sketch looks good, it is time for me to do the first extrude which is the overall shape of the bridge and this is quite important because it's the first time I can actually see my part in three dimensions. Following this I will use the remaining sketches on the bottom to cut the pockets for the piezo discs and wires into my newly created part. Now at this point everything looks fairly well and it's time to start thinking about the saddles, the parts on which the strings will rest. I've decided to put each saddle right on the center of each individual piezo disc. Now for that, I'm now sketching a rectangle and aligning its center with the center of the circles from my previous sketch. The following job is quite tedious and finicky, but I have to now select all the rectangles that I created earlier and then project them to the top surface of my bridge. Now with this finished, I can select these faces and cut the saddle pockets into my bridge. Similarly, I will select the same faces again and I can extrude them, creating new bodies which will be my saddles. The fingerboard radius of this instrument is 12 inches, roughly 30 centimeters. So I'm now creating a circle of this radius in order to check and adjust my saddles so that they match this radius. 
This process is more or less trial and error. It involves a lot of moving the circle around and adjusting the height of the saddles until everything matches up nicely. Now after making sure that the saddles have the correct height, I'm slightly enlarging the saddle pockets because making any parts in the physical world involves a certain degree of tolerance and that has to be reflected in CAD as well. I'm also putting a bevel and a fillet on the saddles just so that they don't cut my strings. Now it's a great time to try and cut some chamfers and some fillets on this bridge. They definitely give it a more finished and more refined look. Again, this software makes it so much easier to add chamfers and fillets. Moving on, I need three holes for mounting the pickup on the base body. Again, I'm not too critical about the positions of these holes, but I want them to be aesthetically pleasing. So after creating the sketches for my screw dimensions, I can cut them into my bridge. I'm also adding a small countersink because I think it would look quite nice if the screw is buried in the bridge. And the last step now is just to put a color on these parts, just to give us a slight idea of how this would look in real life. I'm making the saddles green in CAD because black doesn't really stand out, however in real life I will print them with black filament. I'd say everything looks good in CAD, I'm quite happy with how this bridge came out. Finally we can bring back the original image of the base body for a final check, and there's really nothing left to do other than printing the bridge and putting everything together afterwards. Ok, so the files have just finished printing and I'm really excited about how they look. This filament color really stands out and it printed beautifully. Now I'm quickly checking the fit between the bridge and the piezo discs and sure enough they fit just perfectly in their pockets. I'm also checking the fit between the saddles and the bridge and again they just slide in with a very convincing snap. You can also see now how the brass screws look in their holes and again I'm gonna say that this combination of red, black and brass works very nicely. I will be starting the work on the electronics and I'll start by measuring and cutting a little length of wire which I'm then preparing to be soldered to the piezo discs. I'm stripping the insulation with a sharp knife and then twisting the ends together. As with any electronics work, it's really important to thin your wires before trying to solder them to anything. Now this might come without saying, but please remember to put the heat shrink tubing on the wires before soldering them together. So I'm soldering the piezo transducers in parallel meaning that all their positive wires will be connected to the hot terminal of the output jack and likewise all the negative wires will get connected to the ground. And now after everything is soldered just remember to slide the heat shrink tubing over the connection and use a lighter or a heat gun to shrink it off.
And with that, we now have a piezo pickup, which can go on this instrument, or any other instrument for that matter. Moving forward, I'm now gluing up the piezo elements to the bridge itself. Now I'm using some Loctite Extreme Epoxy, which actually proved to be quite an unwise decision. It has a really fast reaction time, and it hardens in just one minute, meaning that the applicator will get clogged up after one minute of not using it. On the other hand, I'm grateful that it did work out just fine, and I managed to glue up the discs to the bridge, and then I could put a little bit of epoxy on top of the transducers as well, just to hold the wires in place. Now the next part might have been the most stressful one, because everything was already glued up, but I wanted to flood the wire pocket with epoxy in order to hold everything in place. In theory this shouldn't add any problems, but because this epoxy reacts so quickly, it also heats up quite violently. This led to the whole thing expanding and everything just wanted to get out of the pocket. So after the epoxy hardened a tiny bit and wasn't sticky anymore, I found something flat, in this case the lighter used earlier and just clamped it to the whole thing so that nothing could swell and expand anymore. Now this did luckily turn out okay in the end, but I would highly advise against using any of these crazy fast setting epoxies. Alright, so we are theoretically finished with this bridge and pickup combination, but now I really want to test it out. So I'm just temporarily soldering up an output jack so I can plug it in my audio interface and then listen to what it sounds like. And sure enough, as you'll hear in just a second, tapping the saddles translates into electric signal, which can be amplified. I have also used the tuning fork to test how the vibration transfer to the piezo element works, and I'm actually really really happy with the result. And with that we are finished for today's video, I am extremely happy with how this came out and I cannot wait to see it on the base and see how everything comes together. If you like this video please hit that like button, please subscribe if you want to see more of this. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.